tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Yes, so it's technically a sequel to our to our show from last week. Kasi yung pinag-usapan natin last week was fitness, di ba? So ngayon, ano ba ngayon ang magiging topic at hand natin, Pops Josh? Oh yes. With our new topic, we'll be talking about historical European martial arts, or HEMA Oy, for short. Grabe. Um, with HEMA, or historical European martial arts, it is an umbrella term for various martial arts practiced in Europe. And one of the um, notable schools here are more of the schools for swordsmanship. So if you guys are into the Knights of the Round Table or anything that is related to um, medieval swordsmanship, this is the topic for you tonight. I don't know if you were already born when this cartoon was out, but malamang alam niyo na to since a remake is coming out. Okay. Um, oh yes. Vault is fine. Oh, oh it's fine. Vault is fine. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, other kids they like Steve, right? but because mm. I was a chubby kid when I, when I was young, I was in the big bird. I love big I love bird. Big yeah, yeah, I, I love. Um, I know his movements, character. Uh, so my very first martial art, foray into martial arts, is actually judo. But oh. I didn't last long. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I found out that they don't punch and kick in judo. Yeah. So I yeah. moved to Hokkaido, <laughs> which um, that's where I stayed for a couple of years. Um, on and off, in every day. I had to pause in school because the high school I went to um, didn't have a Taekwondo program. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got to do uh, in college. And then that's when I discovered um, Muay Thai. So I dabbled into Muay Thai um, while I was in college. On and off then, I'm more like a jack of all trades. I didn't specialize in one martial art back then. I tried everything, knife fighting. Uh, Muay Thai, boxing, um, and then I went into uh, Krav Maga. I <laughs> yeah, I, I did yeah. certain things. Yes, I know what Krav Maga. Um, and at the same time, I also did archery. So I was doing a uh, instinctive shooting back in around 2010, 2011, and then it was when. I met my FMA instructor, uh, Dr. Sisto Barros, um, that I started my foray into uh, bladed weapons arts. So my first experience in bladed weapons isn't actually Shima, it's uh, yeah. FMA. Because it's I see. very, yeah, it's very FMA. popular. Thing. And it's through FMA, which is more commonly associated with short blades and short sticks. Yeah. Um, I just, out of the blue, my teacher, uh, do, do we have long weapons training? Because uh, ever since I was a kid, I played fantasy games, you know, Pablo, and all that stuff, d and and I was always a sword guy. And when he said that there was, that's when I just set aside everything and focused on uh, learning sword fighting. And it's very inspiring for all people who I know who are introverts as well because um, what Sir Jericho has caters to both the extrovert and the introverts out there and um, it's really inspiring because um, you don't see this kind of program every day. Biggest and motivation, if you chase it, if I'm going to be very honest, okay, you know it's it's so easy to say oh it's self defense I want to learn how to defend myself that's all part of it. But my personal motivation is exactly my hashtag. I, when I started judo, I wanted to be Big Bird. Um, when I went into archery, it's because I played a hunter in the world of Warcraft. Um, I saw, I think I played Max Payne, which is what inspired me to go into Krav Maga. Uh, it's always, in my case, it's always going back to my early pursuits. Um, mm. a, a wonderful side effect of it is learning self-defense aspects of it, uh, learning the actual history of the martial art. Um, even my 
uh, journey to FME was inspired by Geekery. I, I was, uh, I remember, uh, I was playing a Frost Death Knight World of Warcraft. I her towards the Geekery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, from, from there, it became nice, and then we, I looked for my teacher. Um, and you know, I wanted to learn the, the, the martial side of it, yes, that's a given, but in parallel to that, it's really the, the, the satisfaction of my early side. It's similar to joining the lightsaber game. Right? Um, yes, that's lightsaber. true. <laughs> they do cosplay, it's the same thing, but for me, I just do it through martial arts. I was actually uh, a revival art, as far as I can, my own research is concerned. No? Um, of course, there are uh, there are very there are many people out there who can uh, give more detailed uh, answers in terms of the history and the lineages. Um, but as far as my own study is concerned, it is an art that got revived I think around the early nineties, and then this was through the discovery of the different manuscripts and books. Um, of the different masters from Germany, Italy, uh, different styles, Spain, yeah, no? um, when the books were, when the manuscripts were discovered, a lot of people dug into it, tried to revive it, and now it's uh, popular. So how I personally heard of Kima was when um, I started doing FMA. So at the mm. time, the only swordsmanship style that I know was, that was available here in the Philippines, aside from uh, artists in FMA, was Kendo and Kenju. Mm -hmm. uh, Olympic fencing is a swordsmanship style as well. Um, but at the time, that didn't catch my attention. So I tried getting into Kendo. I'm also a closet weeb. But uh, really wanted the European side more. So once I got the, the, the fundamentals from our niece, that's when I started doing my own research. And then, uh, uh, beginner, we give them a stick. A stick? Yeah. Um, it's the easiest way to have people start. Because um, mm -hmm. you can get a stick anywhere. Um, my goal is to lower the requirement of entry as much as possible and i learned that from you know my teacher in our needs um you have to make it as accessible so that the person can really really get into it and uh, the best way to do it is to stick because uh, once you get into it the, the possibilities are you know as limited as your imagination um, if I'm going to be very honest, um, there's more similarities than differences. Um, and it's not related to the martial side. I mean, Kima, specifically the style that I practice in German longsword, is also very aggressive, simple, direct to the point. Um, so is the uh, RD school that I follow. I think the the main difference, I would say, is the, the cultural aspect of it. Um, Kima in the West hasn't had the same range yet in terms of popularity in their own cultures um, that I know of. Okay? I don't quote me on that, that's accurate, but that's my observation. Yes, that's true. Whereas in Arnis, here in the Philippines, Almost everybody knows what it is, and they can relate to it. It's a national sport, a martial art. Um, lots of schools compete in it. It's part of the physical education program of our education system. So that's where I see the major differences are. Um, another that I would say is the entry. So our niece is very easy to enter, right? The the, the gear yes, that's is. True. The gear is easy to access mm -hmm. and pretty much anybody can get into it. <laughs> For me, it's really more uh, being open to interpretations. 
Um, because in, in HEMA, as I said, it's like a very recent uh, mm -hmm. research. It's, you know, it's a, it's a research. Um, it was an art that was revived after losing um, uh, the, the lineage uh, for many years, centuries. Uh, yes, that's true. The way HEMA instructors work, or the HEMA scholars, as they say, when they find something and they say, oh, this is our interpretation of the movement that was written in the books. Because one of the problems is that the books show the starting position and then the ending position, but using the old European language, it's hard to interpret exactly what they're trying to say in between. So like, how do you move from point A to point B? So that's why instructors say, this is our interpretation, this is our interpretation. So um, for me, that's my biggest takeaway as a professional. Um, it's like be, just being open to the opinions of others. Because um, for example, if the movement feels okay to me, like I can do it personally, but there's somebody else who has a different interpretation of it, I'm not gonna shut my, my head down and say no. No, 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 no. My interpretation is correct as well. It's not that. Um, it made me more open to um, testing. Um, made me open to the opinions of others to listen and see what they have to say. And then if there's a takeaway that I can use in my life, I'll do it. So it's kind of like a thing, right? You know, you take you take something that's useful to you, you, you add it to your own, and then it, something is good. Not, then you discard it, and then you know, um, then you suffer. So basically, uh, that's the biggest take away for me um, in terms of um, you know, personal mm -hmm. something. All right. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V eighty one Radio, Manila.